Welcome to this episode of BT Haunts Productions. I am your host, Jason, and with me as usual is my co-host, Alice, who is not with me at the moment. She's a little upset because of the announcement that I'm getting ready to make, which is... You think I'm a fool? No, not me. You can't do that to me. She's angry. I have powers. She does, she does. I have potions. Evil powers. Evil potions. I have my craft. Witchy craft. You will die. 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 You're in trouble. Be trouble. Anyway, back to what I was saying. We have a huge announcement for you. A new series called Our Top 5 where me and my new co-host, you may know him from Comic Collector Guild's World's Finest videos, Lee Lawson. That's right. I'm very excited to have Lee on this new series. And uh, I actually had a chance to sit down with Lee uh, before we filmed the first series. And um, the first one is called Our Top 5, Our All-Time Favorite Horror Movies. So uh, anyway, let's take a look real quick. Lee, how's it going, man? It's going great, Jason. I am excited to be here for our very first episode. Alice, thank you for allowing me to participate in this particular show. I do appreciate it. Yeah, she wasn't that happy, I can tell you, man. But <laughs> I, I think she's okay now. I think she's Good. all right. Good. But, uh, okay. Well, to the viewers, Lee, I, they all know why, I, why I'm into the, the horror uh, genre. And, um, you know, I, I love horror movies. Um, I have collections. Uh, I do the Forest of Fear, the walk through Halloween. Um, I make movie, or I'm trying to make a movie about uh, a horror movie. So um, the the paranormal investigations that we go on. And um, so tell the viewers a little bit what got you into the the horror genre and and how you got here. Sure, man. Um, I'm a big fan of the horror film of horror films have been since I was a kid. Um, it all stemmed from, well, probably my family. My uncle, I'm a big comic book fan too, uh, but my uncle, I got into that genre through him, but he was also a big horror buff. So anytime I would go down to North Carolina and spend the summers down there on Morrisville, which is right outside of Durham, I'd have a great time being scared to death, first of all, because he loved to scare us also, me and my cousin Crystal. So it, it, it was just, had a great time down there. I would immerse myself in the comic books and then in horror films. And it was just a, just a, a lot of fun. Uh, but not only him, my aunt, uh, she was media coordinator at uh, Goldsboro in, in Goldsboro, North Carolina. She was a big horror buff. She would always be reading Stephen King or something or telling us about the latest horror film she saw. Uh, but then also, for those of us who grew up in this area, you know, the Culpeper area, DC area, there was a show that came on every Saturday night called the Cre uh, Saturday Night Creature Feature, I believe it was called. That's right, Creature loved Feature. it. Yes, and it had, uh, he played, He was Captain 20 by day, and he had this little day show or whatever kid show that came on, but then he became Count Gore Duvall, uh, yeah. Count Gore Duvall, um, and he would host these fantastic old horror films. A lot of them were old, the black and white, you know, films from back in the day. Uh, but that's where I started to love the you know, Lon Chaney films, um, you know, all the old Frankenstein and, and Dracula, and, you know, with Bela Lugosi and all of that. So, I mean, it, it, it stemmed from that too. You know what I mean? The classic, the classics. And it stemmed from there. And, and I'm just a big fan of the, of the genre. I actually just watched one that um, I remember watching because they would re-show the, the same movie like a lot. <laughs> but I, I remember um, Gargoyles was on a lot. And I watched that about maybe a, a week ago or something with my youngest son. Uh, he's nine. I was probably around that age, maybe a little bit younger when I saw it. And 
I, I remember it being a lot more scary for one thing. And, <laughs> yeah. and the, you know, the special effects, there weren't many back then, but you know, when we were growing up, that was, you know, it was awesome. And now it's like, Oh man. And the, and the acting was, but uh, it was still a great movie. He liked it. He and did. That was the important part of that. Yeah. You know, and it's one of those things that <clears throat> all of a sudden it dawned on him that, you know, I guess the, probably the same way it did to me was this gargoyle, that you're watching this monster is also the gargoyle that are up on the churches. And so it's yeah. even more of a creep vibe then, you know what right, I mean? Right. It's funny you bring that movie up because again, the first time I saw that film was down in Morrisville, North Carolina um, at my uncle's house, watched it with my cousin Crystal. And that was one of the ones that was, you know, I, I, I remember catching that, you know, and I would be down in North Carolina once, maybe twice a summer, but I probably caught it every time I was down there. So they were replaying it quite a bit, you know, um, during that time frame well i guess um well i guess that's a good lead way into um our, our top five but uh i'm gonna i'm gonna start it now that i'm thinking about it. But let's do uh we talked about maybe a couple of honorable mentions we already discussed how hard it was to come up uh with this this one is our yours and mine top five all-time favorite horror movies and uh man it was hard uh, we've talked about how hard it was to to come up with this list and um i'm gonna do I, i'll just do two uh, no i'll do three honorable mentions i have to because i, I have so many of them <laughs> so, so but uh, the first one that i'm gonna say is probably the first um horror movie that i could think of that kind of got me into it um even before seeing the gargoyle one this is the one that i saw that got me down this uh dark spiral that i call my life um trilogy of terror and um you know it's just something about that movie and it's three different stories and really the only one that kind of sticks with you know karen black's in it and she's in each one of the the three stories but the one that sticks with you is the final one where it's got the little zuni warrior and it's a all oh, you have don't take the chain the necklace off you know that's all you mm -hmm. have to do and of course she moves it, the, the chain falls off and then, you know, everything just goes downhill from there. It does but, indeed. Um, yeah. I remember that film. I do. And to your point, yeah, Karen Black, you know, she was a great actress from the seventies who really did a lot of those horror uh, films. That's where she really found her claim to fame, I think was in that genre. Um, you know, and later she on, it kind of, yeah, kind of later, later on came into films and other, you know, uh, Rob Zombie, of course, is a big, huge horror fan. So he cast her in a lot of his more recent films that he started to do here in the 2000s but uh no that was a great movie and to your point that's the one that really sticks out to everyone uh you know with the three different um uh three different stories but it's that zoomy warrior that definitely uh <laughs> I, and i don't think she gets the recognition that she deserves as a scream queen mm -hmm. right. you know what i mean you know you have um like linda blair of course she she's recognized uh, and um Jamie also yeah man i mean definitely probably the queen of yeah you know screen queens but anyway um i'll just jump down the other two that i have real quick and, and i think i would be bad with the name jason if i didn't mention friday the 13th part two you know actually if, if i had to choose out of that series it would probably be part six that was one that i liked when you know damn tommy jarvis you know, know just right? leave the guy alone and the series would have been over but no you have to dig him up and Anyway, so uh and not only my, that, but he got he got Arnold Horshack killed too. Yeah, that, man. What was up with that? <laughs> in part six, for those of you guys who don't know, Jason and I grew up of we're men of a certain age. So Welcome Back Carter was a big show <laughs> for us back in the day. And Arnold Horshack was right there with old Tommy Jarvis digging up the uh But he he tried to get up the Tommy body. out of it the whole time. He was like, he's like, I don't know about this. I don't know, man. Maybe you shouldn't dig up this grave and jump down in there and stay up the dude. But I know, anyway, I know. no, that, that's actually one of my favorites, too. <laughs> and, and my last honorable mention that I'll put on is the original 1968 Night of the Living Dead. Oh, and, and to me, you know, that started the, the zombie apocalypse that we're seeing now. And it's just, you know, awesome. Black and white, man. There's something about a black and white movie that to me back then it was even more realistic and, um, you know, who knows, man? It might have started with some crazy virus and people were going to get their uh, their shot to. <laughs> 
you know, the, who knows? Yeah. Be careful on that second one. Exactly. Exactly. You know, <laughs> first vaccination, but the second one. <laughs> That's the one that gets you. Yeah. No, very good uh, choices, man. Um, to your point, that that night of the living dead was it 68? You said it came out in 68. 68. George yeah. Romero, man. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, man, he that really kick started the whole. I mean, everybody based their zombies off of that afterwards. I mean, they did. Then eventually, Zack Snyder changed them up a little bit in the 2004, yeah. was it? Uh, mm -hmm. 2004 version, I think, or 2003 of Dawn of the Dead. Um, you know, he changed them up. They, they became quite quite a bit of a movie. Yeah, shaker uh, they're time. moving like this. And then, yeah, Dawn of the Dead, all well, of a sudden they were, they're oh, running. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. But no, but up until that point, I mean, all the zombies were based, you know what I mean? It were kind of the imprint from um, and look at how you, dead. Yeah, look at how you kill them. You shoot them in the head. Yep. And, and that's every zombie movie. You yeah. know what I mean? That's how you kill them. So it's it's been originated since then. So no, he definitely I mean made a huge splash and then a lot of a lot of copying since then. But no, yeah. great, great choices, man. Very cool. All right. My, so yeah, let's hear yours. Yeah, my choices are don't be don't bit... come up with anything that my wife might think was scary. That's what I'm <laughs> I'm worried yes. you're gonna come up with like ET does not count, just saying. Oh yeah, of, of course not. Why would I ever put ET on the list? As I oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would never do that. As I yeah. make a big X of his long. What? Scary. No Ghostbusters? Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no Zoo, the Keymaster. <laughs> all right, no. Okay, sorry. No, all right, no. So, but I, I am a little nervous because I tell you, I think that my horror movies, although scary to me, please refrain from chuckling as I name my. <laughs> <laughs> i give you my As word I, I, i'll try not to okay please please sir all right no i'm going to kick off here with a movie came out not too long ago actually about four or five years ago called lights out oh yeah um to me it uh you know it starred uh Teresa palmer who's uh been she's not quite the scream queen but she's been in quite a few she'll films. get there yeah she has she has been in some good stuff uh it's also directed by david sandberg but to me you know it's the it was basically the whole even the trailer got me a little bit you know anytime if you guys have seen it seen the movie it's basically this demon is out there and every time and it only can travel at night or throughout you know any lights would mess it up so basically the circumstances that they set up the different scenes that they set up in this film you know somebody's going out of the room and they turn the lights out and they see a figure there you know and then they switch back on and it's not there and then it happens to get closer and closer every time they do that somehow and it was just a pretty horrific film to me you know what i mean that's stuff of nightmares basically you know well I, mean? I, I think that's one of uh, almost everybody's fear is darkness you know yeah. just being in the dark or you know being alone being in the dark i think that's a that's a good choice man that's a good one well thank you my friend thank you yeah. yes that's and a I'm check gonna, i'm gonna uh, give you a check right now why, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and directed by David Sandberg, like I said, who's gone on to direct the Shazam movie and its sequel. So I can't wait to see that. Movie. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, it should be. It should be. So that's that's one. The next one on my list was uh, came out in 2008, stars Scott Speedman and Liv Tyler. It is The Strangers. Uh, I thought that one was pretty scary. Too. I'll you give you a, I'm going to give you three checks for that, man, because that's <laughs> that is I. I Go ahead. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna let you go with this one, dude. It's the hope invasion, man. You know what I mean? And just any. It's also the classic being out in the cabin in the middle of the woods, or not even really in the middle of the woods. I mean, they were just out in the country. You yeah. know what I mean? They're just, they're just out in nobody the, uh, the country around. road. Yeah, nobody around. But it, but it wasn't like they were desolate. You know what I mean? There was a couple yeah. neighbors that you had to run to, I guess. But you know, still, the fact of the matter is, the chills that came out of that film were pr pretty incredible to me. You know what I mean? I remember this again. The trailers to me and it's funny that the trailers can be pretty effective for, for some horror films and the ones that are i find on my list i remember actually seeing the trailer first and being like man yeah. that's gonna be a good one you know what i mean and that one was another one that got me right off the bat you know the music playing and the guy the record skipping around. back to the yes. same. hey i'm telling you you know they're on the outside and that's already freaking the the viewer out you know the audience yeah. is they you know they're there and you kind of know you've seen the preview you know what's getting ready to happen the part that got me man about that movie is when she's standing at the sink and she's lighting that cigarette and you don't even notice but the dude is standing right there in mm -hmm. the house now and it's like oh my god man you yep. know she's dead, <laughs> you know yeah dude, i thought that one was was pretty pretty creepy what is it is mary there is mary home? Uh, yeah you like know? no man go away <laughs> yes they should have just left right i know there. i know 
also notable for killing off Glenn Howerton, who is one of the stars of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it, it's a rare horror film appearance by one of my favorite, uh, you know, comedic actors from a show. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But no, that was one. And another one, um, this one is directed by James Wan, uh, written by Lee Winnell, uh, stars Patrick Wilson, Rose Byrne, and the famous, the infamous, famous Lynn Shay, Insidious is on my list. Um, yeah, I thought that was good... pretty damn creepy. You know, tiptoe to the tulips, my friend. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you, you know, it's so, when they take a, a happy song, which it's kind of a creepy song anyway. It is, it is. Tiny Not Tim. until you watch the guy, yeah, when you yeah. see Tiny Tim doing it, you're like, oh, is that dude really singing that? But yeah, to take a song like that, that we actually, when I was in grade school, um, we had, you know, the little cantatas we do, the little musicals. That was one of the songs we did. And to take a, a happy childhood song and to throw it into something like that. And now that's what you think of when you hear that song. Yeah. You, know, you think of that movie. Great movie. Yeah. It was. It really was. And um, they, you know, I think these guys were the ones who, correct me if I'm wrong, but also kicked off the Saw franchise. Yeah. You know, um, those two guys did together which was, it has its own place in horror, you know. Um, <clears throat> Saw was a pretty good film also. But uh, I liked it because of course, Lynn Shay's in it and she's been in some great horror films, uh, you know, for the guy, she's the, the lady who's trying to brought to help. Yeah, the, and you, yeah, she's like working on the Scream Queen too, man. She's been in a lot of them. Oh my gosh, yes, uh, so many. Um, but, you know, it, it is basically, it's not just a, a horror, or, you know, uh, possessed house. Or a haunted house story you know it, they, they actually do what people do when you're watching the movie and there's a haunted house you're like why don't yeah. you move these guys yeah. did you know what i yeah. mean but guess what it wasn't that it was that the boy was haunted so the, the, the spirits just moved along they you know they thought it was a haunted house they packed up they did they moved they did the right thing Still well haunted. it's boy, it's not there. always the house that's haunted it could, <laughs> could be something else but hey but i'm gonna i was gonna give you like two checks for that one i'm giving you a check and a half because you know the demon kind of looked like Darth Maul. Yeah, so. <laughs> that is true. I will, I will say that that is true. But it was, I, I thought it was pretty effective. Also, start Barbara Hershey. Yeah, who is um, a classic, uh, the entity. Um, yeah, part of the, you know, horror film that came out in the eighties. Also, was oh, it was good. great. It was a good movie. It was a good one to, uh, you know, you got people coming in. It's always something about when you're watching a movie and they can't see the other people that are actually in the room. You know, mm -hmm. you have these like ghosts coming in and like, you don't see that? The yeah. Other people don't see that? Like, yeah. <laughs> and the ending for that movie, I think was pretty effective also. You know, they think they've won, but at the end, you know, and yeah. spoiler alert, it's yeah. you know, the father's possessed and, they, and the hair, the lady, Lynn Shea, who I've been talking a lot about, you know, is then killed, you know what I mean? By, by the father when they thought he was healed. And, and, he and it's a sense. series. So what is there, three of those? There have oh. been, um, th that was the first one. I think there's been three or maybe four. Maybe actually. so. There's four all in total. So it's kicked off. It's, you know, made its own mark and, and, and went on and carried on and started its own franchise. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I thought it was pretty good. Good deal, man. That's yeah. 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 I think those are good honorable mentions. Why, thank That's you, All sir. of them, really. <laughs> so All right, welcome everybody to this episode of Our Top Five. And with me as always, I didn't even introduce myself. All right, well, I'll start again. <laughs> See, I tried to script that in my head just now. I messed up. All good. <laughs> so at one point, I don't know if you knew or not, I was thinking about being a serial killer. Oh, really? Right. <laughs> Told the guidance counselor. That. Yeah, and then I watched this movie and... It was all right. I, I saw the movie and I said, nope, no serial killer life for me. Oh, there you go. Well, yeah. you know what? I I, I want to be an engineer. On behalf of all of your um, uh, possible victims, uh, thank you for choosing the different, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. A different uh, route, I've got my, my friends. I've got my lipstick on. I'm writing the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Well, that wraps up this episode of BT Haunts. Make sure you tune in for our new series, Our Top 5, with Jason and Lee coming very... I will eat you alive. Yeah, we'll bring plenty of barbecue sauce is all I gotta say. Be sure to tune in to them coming very soon. See you next time.